Commissioner Gordon, and he says, you know, there, there, there's a lot of talk going on there. Some say you're a friend, some say you're an enemy. And, and he said, what do you think? Do I think you're my friend? Right? That's the very important stage. And the stage after that is called the approach. The approach to the inmost cave. Now, the prophet's life, that's simple. It's a, basically the story. This is the part where the hero goes into a cave, or the metaphor. It doesn't have to be a cave. He can go into himself to, to kind of reflect and think about things that have happened and what to do and strategize. Superman also is seen in a, in a scene going to a glass cave to do the same thing. Okay? So again, they take the stories that exist that we know are true and they build the fiction on top of it. Then comes the ordeal. The ordeal is a very, very important part. The ordeal is basically where we have our first near death experience. What would that be? What's the first near death experience? When he. When he made. Was it? The hijab, right? What happens in the hijab? So in the story, you're reading, you're reading for, the, for the first time, they go into his room, they want to kill him in his bed. Who's there instead? Ali's there, right? They go off into the cave, and we go back to the same story. What, sa what saves the... What saves the usually, what, usually what saves the hero in the ordeal is there's a gift from the mentor. Now in the prophet's life, the mentor there would be God. What was the gift that God gave that helped him escape being killed in the cave? Yes. Very good. The spider, the spider web. What else was And exactly, and you always have its X, right? So that's that's the that's and, and this is these are steps that are like if you think about any. You guys watch Lion King. What happens to Lion King's father? Same. It's the same story. But as I talk about this thing about Tarzan, Lion King, Superman, it's all people just get these stories out one after the other. They're the same stories. Then comes the rewards. So after after you're able to cheat, cheat death, there's a, what's the reward in the prophet's case here after Nichiro? What happens? Where does he go? Oh, he's great. He goes to Yetzir, Medina, right? Oh, yeah. Which he has 9,000 followers right there. Right? And the reward is that this time starts being spread. When it comes to superheroes, the reward, the reward is usually a girl. <laughs> then there's the road back. On every journey of a hero, he starts in one place, he goes on a journey, and then where does he go back to? He goes back. So in the Prophet's case, he started in Mecca, went to Medina, where did he go back to? Mecca. Okay? Every super, every super, the Batman starts in his home, goes back to his every, every, Everyone in his follows the same circle. Simba, Lion King, starts off in, in his father's kingdom. Mufasa scares him off, and what happens later? He comes back to the kingdom. But it's always the same story, always all this. And this is not about, it's not saying that every story has to be written this way, but this kind of story works. It works the way you tell it this way. Then there's the resurrection. Again, there's another near, near death experience. So this is the, the, it could be any one of a number of stories. And obviously, when it's somebody who's lived over 60 years, like the Prophet Peace be upon him, you can see many of these heroes' journeys going on. When it comes to the movie, it's simple. They have the beginning, middle, and end, and they make it all work perfectly. When the person's life is never so perfect, and it goes through many iterations. And then there's always returning elixirs. So when they go home, they go home with the elixir or the truth. So the Prophet started in Mecca, went to Medina, came back to Mecca with the truth. What was the truth? Hold on, right? So the recap. Heroes are introduced to the ordinary world. They receive the call to adventure. They are reluctant at first, but refuse the call, but are encouraged by a mentor to cross the first threshold and enter the special world, where they encounter test allies and enemies. They approach the Amos cave, crossing the second threshold, where they endure the ordeal. They take possession of the reward and pursue on the road back to the ordinary world. They cross a third threshold and they return the elixir. So this, that basically right there, that, that, that what I'm going to show you, is what every single movie that has the hero goes through. So if you're thinking about writing stories, yes? The Hunger Games? I haven't watched that. Is it good? That's the, I wish my kids would do that. All three of them? So I started this with my, my first books that I wrote in Australia, I did, I did when I was in my mid-20s. Um, were published in the Middle East. About, and basically, I used that as my first time in testing these ideas. So this first book was only a thousand words. I drew these. I can't draw. My circles look like triangles. Right? But it was my testing the idea. So in these books, the main cap, there's a land called Mount Sudan where everybody's round. That's the ordinary world. The new character's board is a half circle. That's how he's different. Right? Think about Superman, think about the prophet's life. He's different. He's neither. So what happens because he's different? They make fun of him. Some, some people like him, but they mostly make fun of him. Then he goes through, he tries to fit in, it doesn't work. At the end though, there's a flood. And 
and all the circles who can bounce and roll can't control themselves in the water, but he's a boat now. He can save them one by one. Right? Very simple, thousand words, and, and, and I did book two, book three in the series, and that was my first time that I actually tested these ideas. And what I just showed you was the 99. Now, some of the things I trace in the 99, when I talk about tracing, for example, our main bad guy's name is Rugal. Who knows who Rugal is? Who knows who Abu Rugal is? Anybody? You guys remember the story of Amr al when Abu Rahal's army marched in the Kaaba to destroy it? Well, the leader of the army's name was Abu Rugal, the person who gave instructions on how to get to the Kaaba. So our main bad guy's name was Rugal. Now, according to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped the invading army with birds who had, who had stones. So in the world of the 99, it's the 99 that stopped Rugal. They're not birds, but they're superheroes, and some of them fly. Right? And what do they use? They use their newer stones that you saw in that episode. Right? So the stories are secular, just like Hollywood's are, but they're based on a different book. Now, the other thing I use is that the stones come from... There's a, there's a, the, another thing I trace is, there's a story about the fall of Baghdad in 1258, when the Abbasid Empire fell out to the Mongols. The books of that heck were thrown in the Tigris River, and the Tigris changed its color with ink. I redrew that story. In my version, the librarians put the stones into the Tigris River and took all that information that was lost in those books. Those stones then smuggled to Spain where they were safe for 200 years, and then they were spread all over the world, and now there's 99 heroes, they're from 99 countries, and they get their powers from these stones that have within them the collective civilization and knowledge that we think is lost to the Abbasid Empire. Okay? Um, so here's some, some, of the, some examples. That's Jeff Barr, who's our Saudi character. But 200 years ago, the stone was with the South African character, and 500 years ago was a Mexican character. So the idea that these stones were always there. But, the, but because, of, because there was no technology, the 99 couldn't find each other to, to, to fight the good fight until more recently. These are the characters. We have Mujiba from Malaysia, Jabbar from Saudi, Mubita from, uh, from Portugal, Wasak Mizdia, Nur from the Emirates, Badana from, from Yemen. The fun story about Badana, I went home to my wife and I said, I, 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 I did a character after you. She said, show me, so I showed her a Badana. She said, that's not me. I said, your eyes are so creepy. <laughs> This is what a comic book goes through. So we started as a comic book series. So a comic book first goes through the character guide, which I wrote the first version of before I raised money. That's what a script looks like. So a script for a comic book is very much like a script for a movie, because you have to give direction about what to draw and how to draw and stuff like that. Then it goes to the penciling. So we have somebody who pencils the same guy that pencils Spider-Man comics, pencils our comics there. Then it goes to inking, the guy that inks the Hulk comics, inks our stuff. Then it goes to coloring in Los Angeles, and then to the letter. Those are the processes. When it comes to the animation, and that's, that's the comic book, it's out in 12 languages, that's Chinese and cell phones, uh, Turkish, Indonesian, Arabic, obviously English. Um, the 99 Village Theme Park launched in Kuwait four years ago. We have around 350,000 visitors a year. It's not Disneyland, uh, but, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's not Disneyland, but, uh, but it's more than 10% of the Kuwaiti population. Okay, so in, ter in terms of the animation, I just showed you a full episode, but I want to show you how an animation is made. So basically what happens in animation is that, is that first you go through the script, so same thing like the comic books, there's a character guide in the script, and then we go through something called the animatic. Every episode goes through what I'm going to show you now. Watch this. That's a, that's a typo that was chasing.
are the powerful. And my was from me to be your the guns. We got positive coverage in all the world media. Everybody in the was very positive. We talked. It's the first time, first time in a long time that you know, many governments spend a lot of money. We got this with no PR agency. Basically, about the positive things, the positive values that Islam shares with the rest of humanity. We're very proud of. There's a new thing that came out in America that has our characters working with Batman and Superman in a Wonder Woman who found her clothes in the closet after looking for 70 years. Uh, these these uh, new comic books that came out sold in America that basically have uh, characters that have the storyline starting off with distrust. So Superman actually punches Jabbar in Book Two of the Nine, and then they figure out it's the bad guys from both universes that are causing the distrust. And the storyline is moving the trust. Okay? And uh, this story had this uh, had a lot of people who supported a lot of people who were critical of it. And um, we, we had the good fortune of, of, uh, of President Obama speaking about this crossover that teaching gave We call it the most, the most uh, innovative response to this Cairo speech. That's 99 Unbound. That's what's going to be showing tomorrow. It's an 80 minute film. It's basically the first four episodes. What you saw is episode five. So the, the first four are showing tomorrow is a film. They came out in the New York Film Festival and went around the world last year. And it's being shown in Toronto for the first time that I can play. So I'm happy to take any questions you might have. Right after this, in 10 minutes, there's a film called Wham Bam Islam showing at 4 o'clock. That film was about the making of the 99, the problems we had in Saudi, the problems we had in America, how we worked through them. Uh, so we're interested in the piece of the US that film 10. Yes, in the back, I knew that you was bad. Um, first of all, thank you for that. It's absolutely inspirational. Um, in terms of the question I had, um, you went through a trajectory where you went to school, did medicine, right? And then um, clinical psychologist. Clinical right? psychologist. And then went to this. Um, what would you say to students and parents coming out of school, they're, um, they're under a lot of pressure to get a job that's well paid or get a university degree that's more prestigious, um, rather than those students who want to go directly into the arts into graphic design or music um, before doing those more conventional you know, I did it the other way around. When I was nine, I told my parents when I grew up I was going to be a writer. And they said that's a great hobby. <laughs> you know, and, and so I did, I did the school thing. I have three master's degrees, I have my doctorate. 
But then I was 32 and I did what they wanted. I just had to do this. I had to you know, take off my, you know, go to the phone booth and put on my superhero costume. And, um, and so thank God, and he, my father thought I'd gone crazy. He's like, I told you being a psychologist would make you go crazy. <laughs> but this is your kind of the project. We raised millions of dollars for it. It's being shown all over the world. And the thing is, I mean, for me, you know, I'm glad, for me, I'm glad I did this way because I was able to, to, to have, you know, a good job. I still lecture at medical school. I had a clinic. I don't tax it anymore. But I was able to build that part of my life and then kind of do this. Had it done the other way around, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's important to explore. I think the only thing that's going to keep our community from becoming more and more and more extreme is arts and culture. There's no other solution. Nothing else will work. And so I think it's very important to have more and more arts and culture inspired by our community and our culture and our background. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So I hope that answers the question. Yes. Uh, especially with any new concept that comes out from anywhere in the world, there's a lot, there's a lot of obstacles. Oh, yeah. With the entrepreneur who's pushing it. What would you say your obstacles were? Were they in the financial world? Were they in the distribution? Was it cultural? Back in the Middle East? We had it all. Yeah. In the beginning, it was cultural. Uh, I got banned in Saudi, then unbanned, then re banned. Now we're kind of banned. But, it, it just, but now it's on NBC, the largest broadcaster in the region. Saudi owned, so it's, it's kind of an interesting navigating that. Uh, we've had problems in America. When Obama talked about us, it was proof that I was part of the Islamic conspiracy with Obama to spread Sharia law to kids in America. Uh, so you get that. I mean, no matter where you go, it's something new. Financial, it's not, I mean, raising money for intellectual property in the Middle East, which is basically the biggest, you know, the biggest pirates of intellectual property, it wasn't fun. Uh, but I did it. I did it three times now. Um, and, you know, and of course there are problems every day. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing easy. We went from an idea to over a thousand jobs on four continents now, and we raised almost forty million dollars for the project. So it's been, it's been, it's been uh, lots of ups and downs, but overall, it's just the journey is not over yet. Journey is not over yet. When I go back home, oh, full circle. Uh, there was one here before that I said, "Was it you?" And there was a couple of things there. Yeah. Amazing stuff. I was seeing you yesterday and today. Very, very nice. Amazing stuff you're doing. I'm glad somebody's doing it. Um, one, one question, I guess, two parts. Um, first of all, I see some of the, your stuff over here, and I'm also here. Um, some of the storylines that, like you mentioned, in terms of Hollywood, what you have, and, and also some of the characters that I guess I can relate to and see similar. So, how do you, have you had any copyright issues, and how do you intend to protect yourself? And secondly, how do you intend to protect your copyright from the rest of the world and now that you have created it? So, copyright issue that, that somebody said that we're copying them? No, that, I mean, that, that hasn't happened. Uh, we, you know, we. We spent a lot of money investing in, in protecting our intellectual property globally from the very beginning. Before it was in the same mind, but, um, but that being said, you know, I, I, I gave a talk at TED where I talked about how you know, there's this, this school in South Asia where they sent me a picture of you know, little, little girls wearing hijab, holding up copies of the 99, smiling with their teacher in the background. They sent me this, this photo, which, looks, which is fantastic. The bad news is they're all photocopies. Right? So that's going to happen. You know, nothing you can do. You know, I, I'd rather get the. We're, we're, we're a social entrepreneurial venture, so we, we're a double bottom line project. We're for profit, but we're also about spreading kind of these positive images. So you do what you have to do. But you, you, so a couple of kids first. Yes, go. Um, yes. Yes, there is. So Rakib, the watcher, is our Canadian member of Canada. Rakib. Yes. And that just so it takes a lot of time. I mean, it's, this is year 10 that we're working on this project, but the, the animation started in 2008, I believe. 2009 we started. The first episode I saw in 2010, so it took a year for the first one. But then they're all kind of one after the other. Yes? Yeah, um, I'm a young Muslim, and like, I'm in art as well. And I guess my main issue is balancing like principles of Sharia and the art I produce. So I really appreciate the intellectual design you put forward. So what was your response to the accusations that your comics were shirk, uh, like the qualities and such and so forth? What's your intellectual response to that? I mean, or do you have one? My intellectual response to that is basically, um, we're an Islamic company. Uh, we're founded, our thirty percent owned by Islamic Bank, and the Sharia wrote the logo so we're doing. So you can say you don't like it, you can't say it's not Islamic. You know, so that's that's my that's my response. But the thing is, that, see, this is the problem. The problem is that, you know, I don't know if we were in my talk earlier, I talked about art and religion. No, I wasn't. So, the problem, one of the problems that we have in our community is that, and this was the same in Europe for a long time, where art and religion were one. When art and religion is one, who controls interpretation? Religion. Religion. And the religion has its scholars, and all that, and that's, and that's dangerous. Not because it's religion, but because it's just few people that control it. 
you have to divorce art from religion. Right? So i give an example. So one of my sons, I, I showed him a picture of the Mona Lisa. I said, what do you think of this? He said, it's dark. He likes to smile. He saw it in a cartoon once. And he's, a, he's a kid, right? And then I showed him a picture of some Islamic art up on my wall. I said, what do you think of this? He looked at it and he said, nothing. Silence. So what's wrong? I give you your opinion on this one of this. He said, it's the Quran. Of course it's But that's the problem. It's, it's a problem because we're not teaching our kids to be creative thinkers and to give you interpretation of stuff. So fine, they don't have to give the interpretation of the Quran, but make the art inspired by the culture, right? But not being one with the religion. And then you have people who think more freely, and that's the only thing that's going to save us from extremism. That's what happened to the Catholic Church in the 15th century. That's the only thing that beat extremism again. It wasn't the guns or the bombs, it was arts and culture. The Renaissance beat the Catholic Church. Yes? Well, where is your animation studio located? India, in Chennai, India. And another question, what was your biggest problem with Saudi and your economy, I guess? There was no problem. When we, when we submitted our, our, to the Ministry of Information, the guy that submitted it put between brackets, God, 99 days, without asking our permission. And then there was, there was, they thought there was something there that was religious, so they started looking for it and didn't find it, therefore I must have hidden it. So it was just, it was just a nightmare. But we saw that, but when we became Sharia compliant, we just got decided with the problem. One last question? So how did the whole idea start? Like, what was the moment that said, you know, whatever it is, this is what I've been thinking about. Was it just, like, one moment? It or? was just, I was 32, I was in a cab in London, going on a pilgrimage every way to make one of summer from Edgewater with the Harris. And uh, I, was, I didn't know what I was going to do. I had three master's degrees, I had my doctorate. My sister asked me a question about going back to writing for kids. I dismissed it and just started thinking. And just, just on that cab ride, I had the idea, and I just basically went into it. But if you're interested in the, in the fuller story, my dad is showing in a few minutes downstairs. It's an hour film uh, produced by PBS that takes you um, through five years of the journey. Um, so, thank you guys very much. I couldn't be here today to talk to you about Islam. And with that very simple sentence, he changed my life because I saw the gray area. And I saw that it was okay for me to be Muslim and, 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 and make my own make my own considerations while being respectful to others. The journey of the 99 started um, as an idea in the back of a cab. Since then, we've raised over $37 million in financing, have created almost 1,000 jobs, and have created a TV series that has been sold to global audiences. That's actually the film showing here tomorrow based on that. But it wasn't easy, lots of ups and downs. I got banned in Saudi, I got banned in America. The ban in Saudi has since been lifted. It just showed on NBC as a TV series. Um, this is basically the journey, of, the journey of five years of my life where PBS had a camera on me, going from Indonesia to the Gulf to, to Europe to the US, trying to figure this out and trying to create a business. The ups, the downs, the sideways, the almost going out of business uh, twice. Uh, but here we are 10 years later. And uh, thank you so much for coming to the film and I, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.